Well, how will his minions take over the church? By infiltration. This is their battle cry. If you can't beat them, join them. We have been infiltrated by Masons for, well, ever since their foundation, over 200 years ago. This is why our once beautiful liturgy has been so watered down. Archbishop Unini was a Mason, and I had this on the very best authority. This is why liberation theology, which is nothing more than Marxism in Christian terminology, has replaced the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Catholic Church has always also been thoroughly infiltrated by homosexuals. Just recently, Father Enrique Rueda came out with this text documenting the infiltration of every facet of our society by this so-called gay liberation movement. And he has devoted two entire chapters to the infiltration of churches in general and the Catholic Church in particular. And this information he drew from the publications of the so-called gay liberation movement itself. He went right to their offices and to their headquarters. Apparently he thought they were, he was going to join them. And they gave him all this information by which he has documented how our church in America has been thoroughly infiltrated by homosexuals. This is why there are so many lawsuits against priests for child abuse, sexual abuse of boys. Last summer it was 50. This summer it rose to 134 civil suits against priests for these sexually abusing children. And Father Ruida says not only priests, but perhaps even bishops have been drawn into this homosexual ring. Their whole purpose, they know they're not going to get the Pope to come out and approve of sodomy. But they think that by infiltrating the clergy, they can neutralize the church's teaching, just as the modernists did with the pill. You ask most Catholics today, what's the church's teaching on contraception? Well, they're really not sure. It's been so compromised by the modernists. Well, this is what the homos want here in America. They want to be accepted. They want their lifestyle accepted as a normal, ordinary, everyday, alternate lifestyle. They know the only way they can achieve that goal is by infiltrating the Catholic Church, which is the greatest obstacle to their acceptance. Father Rueda points out how the homosexuals have infiltrated religious orders. The Jesuits, they've infiltrated the Franciscans, the Christian Brothers, and of course the Dominicans. When I was in the seminary in the early 1950s, my superior in the seminary said at that time we were being inundated by homosexuals. And he was doing his best to weed them out. He wrote a letter pleading with our major superior to help him. The letter was never answered. So he wrote a letter to our provincial council pleading with them for help to weed out these homosexuals. They never answered his letter. I'm afraid that we had been so taken over by communists at this time, they rejoiced to have us infiltrated by homosexuals. They are so strong in my province, they have succeeded in electing one of their own as our major superior. Donald J. Gergen, is mentioned three times in this book by Father Rueda as one of the national leaders of the homosexual movement and infiltration in America today. Two years ago, he was elected the major superior of the Central Dominican province. That shows you how strong 
the homosexuals are in the Dominican order. It's so bad today that a good boy can't even get in my province. I've talked to some of the finest young men I have ever met who were turned away from our novitia. They wouldn't let them in. No, to become a Dominican in the central part of America today, you've got to be effeminate. Or at least, you've got to approve of homosexuality as an alternate lifestyle. And of course, as Mrs. Constance Cumby has so well documented, we've been invaded by New Agers and by modernists. And modernism, as she has explained so well, is the religion of the Antichrist. Well, who are these agents of the Antichrist in the Catholic Church today? Their name is Legion. Father Teilhard de Chardin. Father Karl Rahner. One of the Paritases at Vatican II. Indeed, he's the man who destroyed those five great schemas that John XXIII had prepared. Before the Council even convened, Pope John XXIII had five beautiful schemas. The one on our Blessed Mother was going to proclaim her mediatrix of all graces. These were all sabotaged by Fa Father Karl Rahner. Father Hans Kung, another Paritas. Gregory Baum, who still teaches at a Catholic college, St. Michael's in Toronto. Father Charles Curran of Catholic University. Richard P. McBrien, Richard McCormick of the University of Notre Dame. I went to Notre Dame as a young man. It was there I received my vocation of the priesthood. But I would not send my son there, or my nephew or my niece. Raymond Brown, the so-called scripture scholar. Father Eugene Levidre, another scripture scholar of the Catholic Theological Union. Father Matthew Fox, who's teaching this creation-centered spirituality, which is simply a, a do-it-yourself course in getting possessed. And, of course, Donald J. Gergen, a major superior of the Dominican Order here in the central United States. He's working on a five-volume work that he calls Christology. It is nothing but rank modernism. I went to a lecture of his just to see for myself what is teaching. When he raised the question, is Jesus Christ God? He responded, yes, because we're all God. 